Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to a campfire talk with Pan, except there's no fire and we're not at night. Uh, but today I'm sharing basically 12 things that you don't know about me, uh, some quirks, some cool things of my past, basically for you to get to know the person behind the camera. A few years ago, I had done a video about my life story. So if you want to check that out, I'll drop a link in the description uh, where you had a bit of my background. But today uh, I'm giving you a lot more insight uh, into my past and present. So you guys get to know me, like I said. Uh, it's currently one of the warmest and most humid days in August when I'm filming this uh, here in Montreal, Canada. So it's currently 31 or 32 degrees Celsius, uh, which is almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit and crazy humidity, but it doesn't matter. We're enjoying the outdoors and uh, yeah, let's dive right into it. So number one, I was born in 1981, so I'm 41 years of age, and I was born in uh, the suburbs of Montreal in a little town called Brossard. And uh, as I was growing up, I remember uh, in the uh, 90s when I had my uh, driver's permit at 16 years of age, my parents bought me my first used vehicle when I graduated uh, from high school, and it was a 1990 Toyota Tercel, and I loved that car. Uh, and yeah, I got into tuning because of it. Uh, and uh, later on, the Fast and Furious movies came about, so I'll talk about that later in the video uh, but I love that car so much and that's how I got into car washing and detailing is I wanted to learn how to take care of my prized possession because for me my vehicle was everything right it allowed me uh, to have this freedom and go anywhere I wanted whenever I wanted and so that's how I started. And I used to wash the car like so often, uh, probably four or five, five times a week. So even more so than I do now with my Porsche. And uh, yeah, there were fun, fun times. My parents had a garage, uh, not as big as what I have now. So the water used to splatter and splash all over the place. My dad was a master electrician and he, has, he had a lot of his tools and equipment lying in the garage. And so the water would go all over that. He'd get mad at me and saying, you wash your car, your stuff is splashing all over the place. You have to take care. But, uh, yeah, I was stubborn and uh, still kept on doing that. Uh, I had a great youth in that city. Number two, now I uh, love collecting a lot of stuff uh, like luxury watches. Also, I think I'm a sneakerhead. I have a pretty big uh, sneaker collection with uh, 30 or 40 pairs of sneakers currently right now, mostly uh, Air Jordan. Um, more on that later in the video. But uh, when I was younger, I used to collect uh, comic books, hockey cards, and stamps. So uh, hockey, of course, well, being from Canada, it's our number one sport. And here in Montreal, we have uh, the Montreal Canadian the uh, professional hockey team from the NHL and they're the team that has won the most championships of any professional sport in the world with 24 Stanley Cups. Uh, currently they're not as good as they used to be decades ago but we still love to support our local team right. Uh, collecting stamps. I remember there was a uh, movie that I watched in French growing up that was called Les Aventuriers du Timbre Perdu or The Adventures of the Lost Stamp or something like that uh, and I remember seeing the Blue Nose Stamp which was a stamp from the 1920s uh, about a boat in uh, eastern part of Canada that won a lot of races in boat races and that just got me hooked to want to collect some stamps so that was cool and uh, well comic books I'm sure a lot of uh, young guys today still collect those or perhaps you're older and you still do I used to love uh, things like the X-Men the Amazing Spider-Man because I loved to I loved to draw a lot when I was young and I was taking inspiration from some of the best artists like Todd McFarlane one of the best drawers uh, of the Amazing Spider-Man if you ask me in my opinion and so, yeah, I used to, to love collecting that kind of stuff. By the way, what do you guys collect? What is your passion? Let me know. Drop a comment in the comment section under the video. Uh, I'm curious to get to know you guys as well. Number three, my favorite style of music has always been hip hop. So I know it shocks a lot of people when I say that I love hip hop music and rap and that kind of stuff. They're like, what? For some reason, I don't know why some people believe I listen to classical music, which I do because I love, uh, I'm an audiophile and I have a pretty high-end hi-fi stereo setup that you can see in previous videos videos. So I enjoy listening to all sorts of different music, rock included as well, things like ACDC and all that stuff. Uh, but I got hooked to uh, hip hop in the early 90s when the uh, first Wu-Tang Clan album, 36 Chambers, got released uh, in 1993. Uh, I remember the uh, Doggy Style album from uh, Snoop Doggy Dog in the early 90s as well. Uh, there was Dr. Dre with The Chronic. So those three were probably the foundation that really got me hooked to the beats, to the rhymes. Um, there was something about the rawness of what they were saying in the music that really spoke to me. I, I don't know why, um, but yeah, I just really liked the rhythm, the beats and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, ever since that day, I got hooked to hip hop and still to this day, that's probably what I listen the most uh, in my garage or uh, in my car as well. So uh, what's your favorite style of music? Let me know. Drop a comment in the comment section. You guys remember the Wu-Tang? Uh, they're still together. I mean, there was this huge documentary done about them 
and uh, there's been some struggles like in any major group, right? A lot of the guys branch off, think they can do their own thing. I miss the early days of their stuff though. Number four, talking about hip hop, uh, which is my favorite hip hop artist? Well, it's 50 Cent. So I was in university back then at the medicine faculty uh, in the early 2000s, studying in molecular biology and biochemistry. And in 2003, the Get Rich or Die Trying album was released with the crazy success hit uh, in the club and still to this day when I play that beat there's something about it uh, I was never a person to enjoy clubbing or doing a lot of clubbing when I was young but somehow it put me into a world where I was in the club with them and enjoying and having uh, some great time so yeah 50 Cent is definitely my, my favorite rapper of all time just the way he spits out his rhymes uh, the bars that he drops his uh, writing is very very good uh, and of course the beats he worked a lot with Scott Starch one of the craziest producers ever making some insane beats right number five i was heavily into tuning in the early 2000s uh, so especially when uh, the movie the fast and the furious was released in 2001 with vin diesel paul walker and the great cast uh, i remember that scene vividly still to this day that orange souped up toyota supra that pulls up at a light next to a ferrari and it was a cameo by the uh, movie's producer that was in there or the director should i say that was in the ferrari and he turns looks at paul walker and vin diesel and he say hey Nice car, pal. What's the retail on one of those? Uh, well, the guy in the Ferrari actually uh, says uh, more than you can afford, pal, Ferrari, and just starts revving the engine. And then they had that epic race. <laughs> it was crazy. So tuning was really, really big in the early 2000s here in Montreal. And in uh, 2004, I got, uh, I bought my first brand new car myself. So it was a, a Nissan SER Spec V, uh, an orange color. You can see that in my life story video. And I tuned it like crazy. It was one one of the fastest naturally aspirated cars of the Nissan Car Club at the time that we had. I was doing drag racing. Uh, I also was doing some uh, competitions in the IASCA World Championship. So the International um, Association for Sound Quality and Sound Pressure Level. So there was two divisions. I was competing in the sound quality because I was an audiophile and I won a lot of first places, uh, including one of the finals in New York. So that was uh, pretty awesome. Custom everything, right? And uh, that really dove into uh, the next step, which was part-time being a writer for a local tuning magazine that was called Tuning Audio and Performance back in the days. And I wrote uh, in another bigger book uh, about car reviews later on. So I always kind of was into the car world. So detailing and car modding, but definitely the Fast and the Furious just really propulsed us into this crazy world of, uh, of tuning. And funny little anecdotes about the Spec V. So I had taken delivery uh, from the dealership and the following day, uh, a bunch of friends and family came over, of course, to see and celebrate. It's a big thing, right? when you get your first new car and still to this day every time I take delivery of a new car I'm always like a kid in a candy store it's a special moment so uh, they were sharing that moment with me and I think I got over enthusiastic and on a straight line it was wet that day it was a it was raining outside and so the pave the pavement was wet and uh, I maybe accelerated a bit too fast and when I pumped the brakes the car locked and started sliding and I just went into a ditch um, people were freaking out there was a friend that was actually filming the moment he deleted the footage because uh, he, he he just got into panic mode my brother was warning was running towards me because he thought I had uh maybe injured myself so luckily enough there was a bit of mud so all I had to do was call a towing to pull me out of the ditch but no damage done to the car that was a big lesson learned and uh yeah it could have been a lot worse so uh, you know when you're young you have that adrenaline pumping and you sometimes do a lot of stupid stuff that was definitely not a moment I was proud of uh, but thankfully yeah the car was unharmed number six uh, growing up as a teen uh, when I was in high school summertime I used to work in a fast food chain restaurant and I remember those crazy Crazy hot days working over the grill and cooking hamburgers and uh, subs and all sorts of stuff and and fries in the fryer and just so much heat but we had a lot of fun and we had a lot of weird customers because I used to work the night shift we'd close at like 2 a.m. so when the bars would close a lot of people would come and have a bit of food right after they were there so uh, not every uh, buddy was uh, logical in their mind some were quite a bit intoxicated who knows if it was just alcohol but there was this guy once that uh, that came in and he was yelling like I want a spicy hamburger uh, give me the spiciest stuff man and so my coworker that was with me uh, had enough of those antics and he said he wants spicy I'll give him spicy and so he emptied like an entire shaker um, full of that what was it called cayenne pepper and so he emptied that and put just a thin layer of mayonnaise to kind of mask that 
and gave that to the person. And um, so he was eating the hamburger. And at one point we could see literally the sweat dripping off the forehead. But the guy was yelling that he wanted so much spice. Obviously now he couldn't complain, right? So he finished the entire thing and we never saw him again. But all that sweat dripping down the forehead. Oh my God. Number seven, believe it or not, guys, I never had a single drop of alcohol in all my life and I never smoked ever. Um, I'm proud of this today. Growing up, of course, all my friends used to have a drink here and there, right? And they'd be like, why aren't you having fun with us? And so I had different ways of having fun. I was actually enjoying seeing people in a degradation state. So starting off perfectly fine. And as the evening goes uh, goes by and they drink and they drink, the mental state alters and they, they start saying all sorts of goofy and funny stuff or acting weird. So that was my fun. But uh, my parents used to smoke and I used to throw away their packs of cigarettes. And uh, well, you guys know they're quite expensive right so they were mad but ultimately i won because they stopped smoking and so um yeah they, they stopped smoking for like over 20 years now so i kind of understood that that wasn't good for you never attracted to, to alcohol anyways just smelling it i'm like eh which is funny because i'm with a, a girlfriend isabelle that absolutely loves wine so every time we go on a trip and uh or at a restaurant she likes uh drinking a bit of wine so i got to kind of understand how they produce stuff because we like to visit vineyards and that kind of stuff so number eight i used to play basketball in high school uh and i just enjoyed it i was in the um center position kind of like shaquille o'neal used to be right so they also call it the big man or the low post uh, in uh, basketball terms so um yeah i was the tallest guy on my team me and another guy we were both uh, in high school uh, i was six foot two i'm six foot three inches tall today a meter and back then that used to be tall and I absolutely loved basketball because during my high school year which was in the 90s this was also um, the the crazy run that the Chicago Bulls had with uh, Michael Jordan for me the best basketball player of all time uh, Scotty Pippen and the rest of the group and so that six championships so two three-peats uh, I don't know if it'll ever be done again but it was insane watching their run and so like many I was inspired as a teen by watching MJ win championship after championship uh, six NBA Finals, six championships, six NBA Finals MVPs. Does it get any better than that? The guy was clutch. His last shot ever in 1998 uh, to win the game uh, was a game winner. His last shot for the Chicago Bulls. Uh, it was insane. So yeah, I used to love playing basketball. I still do today, shoot some hoops every now and then, uh, but not as much as I used to after high school when I went to college, which we called CJEP here in uh, in Quebec. The competition was a lot taller, first of all, so I was not the tallest anymore. There was guys now that were 6'6", 6 6'7", 6 6 and uh, who had crazy uh, abilities that I did not have at that point. So I decided to focus more on the studies and so let basketball go. But uh, still to this day, I enjoy basketball. By the way, what is your favorite team in the NBA? Drop a comment in the comment section if you guys like b-ball too. Number nine, I speak three languages, so uh, English, French, and Greek. Uh, as uh, early as kindergarten, I used to study in three languages. So kindergarten used to teach us Greek, English, and French. So I can uh, read, speak, and write all three languages. And at home, well, my dad is an immigrant from Greece. Uh, he grew in a little, uh, grew up in a little city called Mesologi, um, which is about three hours from Athens, if I remember correctly, their capital. And uh, my mom is French Canadian, so uh, they married. And well, ever since I was a little baby, I learned to uh, talk all three languages. So I think having um, different languages is definitely a plus uh, and a richness uh, to anybody's life and that allows me to also do videos in both English and French on my channel and share my passion and knowledge with a lot of different audiences. I know some of you guys in uh, Greece might want me to do a video in Greek one day. Uh, so, so that's a little speech in Greek where I say hi to everyone. I hope everyone is doing well in Greece. Uh, number 10, this is maybe a bit uh, more tragic because life isn't always uh, rosy, right? Uh, I lost two family members to Alzheimer's. I think it's one of the uh, worst diseases along with cancer, but I lost my great grandma and my grandma to Alzheimer's. So a very, very sad sickness where at the end of their life, they don't even remember who you are. They, don't re they didn't remember their own kids and they didn't remember me as their grandkids. So that was a, a shock. Like I couldn't believe, especially because I lost them at a, a young age. My great grandma was super young. And I, I couldn't understand or process the fact that she couldn't remember me when she saw me, right? Who is this person in front of her? Maybe that was a reason why I also went into medical research later on in life. And I'd say I, I'd kind of do my part in trying to, to help solve these diseases or at least 
um, do something about it, right? And uh, yeah, it's just an insane disease. And thankfully now DNA testing allows you to know if you have one of the genes um, that might carry the uh, eventual progression into that disease. So I did the DNA testing and luckily I do not carry that gene. So I, I should be um, worry free for the rest of my life because it was still a, a stressful thing for me. My heart goes out to any, uh, any of you guys who has to deal with that with a, with a loved one. It's, uh, it's not easy. Number 11, uh, what are my favorite movies of all time? Two of them come to mind. Uh, Commando with Arnold Schwarzenegger in 1985 and in 2008, The Dark Knight. As I was growing up in the 80s, I think action movies were a huge thing. You had uh, Chuck Norris, you had Bruce Willis, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, like these epic, epic giants of action movies. And well, as a young kid, um, especially a guy, I should say, I used to love those a lot. And for me, Arnold Schwarzenegger was just like the epitome of what an alpha male was and like a, a role model of what a man should look like, right? Uh, of course, six or seven times Mr. Olympia, crazy body insane insane like i remember him in commando just at the start of the movie him walking around with that log right on top of his shoulders i thought that was just so cool and uh, picking up his daughter like in one hand lifting her up like it was nothing and just one guy against an entire army it seemed and him like just winning uh, and the good guys win at the end of the day i think arnold for me was one of the best uh, action movie actors of all time do you guys agree let me know in the comment section who is your favorite uh, action movie actor of all time uh, and then later on, uh, when I started uh, being in a video file as well, so I love video quality, not only an audio file, but video as well. So tinkering into uh, televisions and home theaters and projectors and all that kind of stuff. I remember one of the first uh, Emax Hollywood movies I had seen that a few scenes were filmed with IMAX cameras was The Dark Knight. I think the entire trilogy um, that, that was made for that Batman series was amazing, but the second one, so The Dark Knight, was great because Heath Ledger as the Joker, one of the best ever uh, now the latest joker as well with uh, joachim phoenix uh, was for me like wow that who is the better joker i'm not sure anymore both did a great job for different reasons uh, but definitely the dark knight like the action scenes um the actors inside there and just the way the movie played out uh, they definitely are my two favorite movies what are what is your maybe favorite movie of all time i'm curious let me know keep on dropping those comments guys let's have this exchange number 12 uh i love traveling so when i met my uh, girlfriend isabel in uh, 2011 so we've been together now for 11 years so well over a decade um she's a beauty she's a wonderful person both inside and out great heart and she's the one who introduced me to traveling because uh, when i was a teen and in my early adulthood i was like ah, i'm not traveling it's not worth it why would i waste my money like traveling the world i i just didn't get it and when i met her well I like anything you have to compromise, right? When you meet uh, someone in your life. And so their passions, you have to try and share them or at least understand them. So she uh, fully was behind my passion for cars and detailing. So I thought I'd give it a chance and start traveling with her. So in 2013, I did my first um, travel in Europe with her. When I was younger, I had went to Greece once with uh, my parents, but that was pretty much it. Uh, and in my early adulthood, uh, I went to Cancun with some friends to chill on the beach. But that was the extent of my international travels. So 2013, uh, I went to Spain 2014 I went to visit my family in Greece again uh, 2015 we went to Croatia 2016 Italy 2017 we did a double so we did um, Austria and Slovenia uh, 2018 we went to France 2019 Portugal uh, this time I was with my uh, brother my parents and my girlfriend as well and then 2020 unfortunately COVID hit so all travel stop uh, but 2021 then we traveled to the western part of Canada I have vlogs for the majority of my videos on my channel if you are curious and want to check that out uh, but 2021 yeah we went out west uh, in Canada to uh, Vancouver in British Columbia and then to Banff in Alberta so uh, the great outdoors the scenery the lakes the mountains you name it it was absolutely super fun uh, and then 2022 so uh, in September I'm supposed to go back to France again to visit to visit a different region uh, the Alsace region yeah I just I just love traveling of course the US I've been to a lot of places so uh, California uh, I was to uh, New York uh, what other states did I do Atlanta so a few spots here and there but by the way uh, because the USA is the most represented country on my channel more than half of my viewers are from the US are there any states I absolutely have to visit 
and maybe tell me why if you're from your state. Uh, give me some uh, tips and places I should visit. I, I saw a guy recently at um, a detailer uh, called uh, Shad, shout out by the way to him. Uh, he's from Colorado and he, he just sold me on the beauty of the nature out there. So I have to go out there and, uh, and see what it's about. So if you guys have any um, things you'd like to suggest in the USA, let me know. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this kind of movie. If you want to see more like these videos and uh, for me to share more about my life, uh, not only smash the thumbs up button, that really shows me your support and it tells me you enjoy this kind of video, but drop a comment. What more do you want to know uh, about uh, Pan and his life? And I'll try and make that happen. And in the meantime, guys, don't forget, keep it tight, keep it clean, and I'll definitely see you on the next one.